Hello. Yeah, I'm done. Let's just leave. No. We yeah. have to stay and we have to review these two albums. One my of name them. My <laughs> name's Charlie. Shut the fuck up when I'm talking. <laughs> what yeah. my name's Charlie, this is Frank. And yes. we have uh just gotten done listening to two albums, one that came out about a month ago and one that is coming out uh tomorrow when we're recording this. Uh, I think we'll start off with the uh, good one, and we'll save the uh, other one. Okay, well, first off, let's listen to the bands here. We okay. Well, what did we listen Silence. to? <laughs> Their album called Suicide Silence. Very creative. We have Mastodon. Emperor of Sand. Now, one of these was good. One of these was bad. Can you guess which ones? Can you guess which one was good and which one was bad? All right. Okay. So we said we're starting off with the good one, right? Yes. Um, in case anyone doesn't have any idea which one's the good one, it's Mastodon and for Sand, uh, by far and away. But let's explain, Frank. What did you think about Emperor Sand by Mastodon? The Sixth, seventh album by them? I thought it was fantastic. I know people are probably going to rail on it a little bit for certain things, but overall it was very good. I yes. liked every song. And, yeah. It wasn't, like, super, super heavy. It sounded a lot like Crack the Sky. There were a lot of influences from other albums. There was still a little bit of Blood Mountain in there. One or two bits of Leviathan, I thought. A lot of practice yes, I agree. I think that personally, this album is probably out of all their albums. This is probably the album that reflects the most out of their entire discography, where you can you can really hear direct influences, like literally, like literally direct yeah. influence to other songs. And it's not a bad thing because no. they're all good, but um, like once more around the sun, it was a little different, you know. Right. There, there's a lot. This, of one, this, going this on. was a lot like this. Sounded like Mastodon, like just from all different kinds yes. of Mastodon, all in one. Um, so, yeah. Well, I mean, what would, what do you think your favorite track on the album was? If you had to pick one, mm. or memorable tracks? We'll go through memorable tracks. You have a little title that says memorable tracks. My favorite riff. Was Scorpion Breath. Uh, I just really enjoyed that riff. Yeah. And what was that? I think like Roots Are Made had a really cool solo. Precious Stones was like entrancing. Show yourself. People have been railing on that song, but I thought that riff was awesome. It's very catchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I liked them all. Yeah. So notables for me. I mean, I, I'd say one of my favorites is the very first one off of Sultan's Curse. Sultan's Curse, Curse yeah. That, that riff, when you hear that... that, that you start off, you're like, yeah, this is Mastodon. Yeah, and it's it's just a nice, heavy riff. It's got a lot of intricacy, but it still keeps the simple heaviness. It's good. I, I don't know so much about the riffs on this album. If we're talking just plainly riffs, I, like, I, don't, I don't think, I I don't like think this is the strongest riff-wise. Yeah, but I think... It's not strongest. No, but I still think that the 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 riffs aren't the the main focus of this album. The main focus of this album was the entire composition and how the entire composition sounds with each other. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I'm laughing because uh, it's like it was very well produced. Yes, unlike another album which we will be talking about very soon. But uh, I would say some of the, like dislikes about this album were is it kind of seems like there was a little bit of redundancy on this album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, I, in the I, first half. There's some really good, really very well done parts that are very interesting. But there's also a lot of parts in the first half of this album that seem kind of just like, okay, we heard that in the song before this. Yes. Yeah. A lot of, it, and that's the thing. A lot of the song, it, like what, what we were saying, how it like reminisces on... Old song, like old albums and things. It sounds like Mastodon because it's like it literally sounds like, like some of their other songs, you know. Like, 
But I'm saying, yeah. like, I'm saying, you, like, you, you can hear, you can hear other songs, songs within some of the songs. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm, well, I'm talking more like within the album itself, like where you go through the first half of this album and you get to a part and you think, didn't we just hear this part on the previous song on this fucking yeah. album? That's that's. I, I mean, yeah. And, and the thing is, is that. That's not a, necessarily a horrible thing because all those parts sound good. There's a reason why they're repeating them, but uh, like I think to me, this album really shines in songs like Sultan's Curse and Andromeda, where you get some of that really he- that that heaviness going on, right? And right. and you get and you get kind of you get more of the sludgy riffs, yes. Because those sludgy riffs, I mean, Mastodon. You can tell they're they're trying to shy away from it. They're not trying to feature those so much, like those Leviathan or Blood Mountain type rips. Well, that's but you, like, you, but you can that's tell like they're, they're just so really good at them. Yeah, they're because... so good at making those kinds of riffs, and they they're so good at making those kinds of sound out stand out. That even when they're not, they're obviously not trying to to make like another Leviathan. When they do go more towards Leviathan or Blood Mountain, it just sounds great. And right. it, it, it's it, it, you can tell it's it's so fucking effortless for them at this point to be <laughs> able to make a good sounding riff like that. Right. But it, that's not to say that all the other parts are bad because there's a lot of. Yeah. I mean, this is probably at the, like when you say that this is the weakest riff wise, this is probably the strongest singing wise. Yes. Like the singing and harmonizing is very well done yes. in this album. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you like Steam Breather and Precious Stones and Roots from Maine. There's a lot of like Brand Daler is really coming off well, and Precious right. Stones too with Brent Hines. That whole verse part, I love it, and like the whole <laughs> beat to that too. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. I agree what? With you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. But at the same time, God damn it, damn it, dog. Um. What? What? At the same time, though, I feel like if they had taken the first half of this album, exclude "Show Yourself" and "Sultan's Curse" because those two, I think, are very—they're two very good songs. But if you take like "Precious Stones" and "Steam Breather" and "Roots Remain" and "Word of the Rise" and you just con- condense them into like take those like whatever amount, yeah. like four or five songs, condense them into three songs, I think you'd have three really strong songs out of those. Uh, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Because sometimes, a little bit in the middle there, you can kind of just get, like, um, like, I don't know, you just kind of drift off a little bit. But. Yeah. And it's, it stops being, like, it doesn't grab, I feel like it doesn't grab your attention as much as, like, right. this guy does. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, practice guys, there's a lot of, like, trippy shit happening the whole time. This is kind of more, like, I don't know, song-like, you want to, I, I don't know if I'm, wording it correctly, but, like, there's more of, like, a formula involved. Yeah. Yeah, I feel... Well, I mean, the other thing about Crack the Sky, too, is that it's it's weird, because when you look at Crack the Sky, Crack the Sky is, like, like seven songs, right? Yeah. And and you can tell, like, there's not a huge amount of diversity between each part and each song, but you can tell they work their hardest for each individual part. Right. And for this, it kind of feels like they knew what parts sounded good to them, but they they just replicated it like two or three times throughout the album. Right, right, right. And it's and and, and it sounds good when you're listening to it, but when you look at the album as a whole, like, it's yeah. just kind of like, okay, do we really need the three same parts? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like I'm just looking anything to criticize. I still really like this album a lot. No, yeah, no, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I was like not bored at all to it. No, it, it's not, and 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 I mean. It's 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 funny too because you can talk as much about redundancy and all this crap as you want, but the fact of the fucking matter is that the guitar work is top notch, amazing guitar work. The drum work is top notch, amazing amazing guitar work, bass too, and then the singing is also at this point like this is like the apex of their singing so far, as far as I'm concerned. Like this, yeah, like this is fantastically good. done. Good. As opposed good. to another uh, attempt at singing, like that's like. like I'm, I don't know what else to say about this album. Like, it was really good. There's, I don't have a lot of bad to say about it. Well, what do you think... Okay, how about this? 
how does this um, fit into Mastodon's entire discography in discography. terms of not only like um, quality, but also just like your personal things you like about Mastodon? Um, I mean, the quality was great. Like, I had no problems with the quality of it. Where it fits, I'm not going to say it's my favorite, because it's more of, like, a combination of different things versus doing one thing really well, you know what I'm saying? You, you get that? Yeah. No, I get that. I mean, the thing is, is, like, the way I look at it is when you look at other, like, I mean... Anyone can have their own personal favorite Mastodon album, because as far as I'm concerned, I mean, there's no bad Mastodon album. Right. I mean, you could I you could say you could bitch as much as you want about like The Hunter or Once More Around the Sun, but when you compare that those two albums to a lot of other fucking bands, they beat the shit out of them. They've been extremely consistent. Yeah, they they are. But when you look at albums like Crack the Sky and like Leviathan. Like, those two albums... It's hard to top stuff like that. Yeah, and it's just because Leviathan is, like, this album that's just... The riffs on that fucking album and how consistently amazing those riffs are is just mind-blowing. Yeah. It's it's unbelievable how you can listen to Leviathan and it's just, like, the heaviest riff you've ever heard, then the heaviest riff you ever heard, then the heaviest riff you ever heard, then the heaviest riff you ever heard, you ever heard just over and over again. Right. And then you get on Crack the Sky and it's unbelievable how... how epic each part sounds. Like, each yes. part has some interesting thing going on, whether it's the singing or the guitar work or er- anything else. And and it's just perfectly constructed. Like, Leviathan's a great album to have a bunch of songs in because each individual riff is memorable enough. And yeah. Crack the Sky is a, good so- is a good album to have not very many songs in because each song is kind of like a very intricate composition. And this is kind of like a mix between those two. Yeah. And sometimes it works very well, and sometimes it doesn't work as well. Right. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good, good way to put it. That's as far as I I can tell. I mean, I don't know. What do you, do you have anything else to say on this album? No, because my brain is freaking numb from that goddamn other one. <laughs> the the other one. Well, let's let's do it. What? What is your grade? For, oh, for this? For I'm going to give it... I've been very tough in the past. I don't know. I, I think it's a solid 8 out of 10 for me. 8 out of 10? Yeah. 8 out of 10. That Sorry. kind of fits where I'm at. I'd probably give this album like a... Uh, like a, a B or a B plus. Yeah, it doesn't B+. reach plus. It doesn't reach amazing level. Right. I think another thing is, I'm, if the more I listen to it, the more I'm probably going to like it. That's basically how I ended up with Once More Rap, Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way, because, like, Show Yourself, when I first heard it, I was kind of, like, eh on it. But now right, I'm, uh, but now I'm more... Like, yeah, like, yeah, I really like this song. Yeah, it's, it, you get you kind of see how catchy it is. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, this seems like an album that could grow on you, too, once you start remembering all the lyrics, and it gets more sing-songy for you and everything. Right. But for now, it's a B. Like, that's another thing I want to talk about is like how a lot of people have been hating on things like show yourself and stuff like that saying it's not heavy enough or whatever and we're talking uh, I guess like in the Suicide Silence album where they're like oh this is experimentation or whatever I think Mastodon has been able to like expand their sound extremely successfully yeah and it feels like organic right and it doesn't feel like Suicide yeah, it, it, it well, we'll get into that, but when like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on a damn album right now. I yeah, just do well, it and I'm angry and well, oh, just give me a second lost. here because <laughs> I just want to make the point where it's like when you look at Mastodon's discography, they start out with like remission, like like very heavy. Like, remission, I didn't like get on board completely with that until I started like listening to it. Oh my God, it's really good. Yeah, but but like my point is, is like with remission, you see like it's very like sludge, neurosis kind of very heavy, and then you get into Leviathan, it's still heavy, but it's more like constructed riffs and like very defined right. parts. And you get to Blood Mountain, and then you see 
some that's experimentation like, yeah, going on, but it keeps with the same riff and the little weird, weird stuff. Then yeah. it gets to like crack the sky. And that's like yeah, and it keeps on insane. expanding. And it keeps it. It feels like their whole album cycle has has kind of like organically grown into right. where they want to be now. And I think it's very impressive when you look back and you see how consistently everything still sounds like Mastodon. But, but you, yeah, when you when you compare this to Remission, they're not even like it doesn't no, sound totally anywhere near each yeah. other. But, but they succeeded. Unlike our next album called Suicide <laughs> Silence. Frank, yeah. what did you think? Of the self-titled <laughs> Suicide Silence album. Let us know. Let us know what you really thought. Uh, yeah, it's, it was not good. Um, while I was listening to it, like, there were parts where there was, like, yeah, this is kind of cool riff, you know, like, but when you go in, I think that's what I wanted to say. Like, this suffered a lot from, like, being Suicide Silence. I just want to, like, get that out of the What way, do you like, mean? You go by that listen break. to a Suicide Silence album, you want, like, really brutal, in-your-face kind of stuff, right? And this, they have extremely small parts where it's like, okay, this sounds like a Suicide Silence song, and then they completely rip you out of the song, like in the first song called Doors, where they, I don't even Whatever know could you be talking about in that song? Who he or whatever however you know, you're saying. <laughs> Everyone calls it a tee he. I don't whatever. know if it sounds so much like a tee he. Yeah, but whatever it was, it it is a very strange choice. Like when we were first listening to it, we were wondering who thought this was a good idea. <laughs> and then that trend just continued. <laughs> Until the last song, where you go off with, like, this little, like, whistly tune from some, like, 60s TV show or something. <laughs> and it, it was genius. It, it, it is genius. genius. You realize that this album <laughs> is a modern art masterpiece. <laughs> where it's, it's, it's not so much... Okay. It's not so much who, who thought this was a good idea... It turns into why didn't you think this was a good idea? To end exactly, on, exactly. on uh, leaving the fever jingle. <laughs> <laughs> no, this 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 album was it, shit. It was terrible. This album but, was a okay. Was, okay, there's a lot of issues. Like, let's a break lot it of, down. Like, like, let's break down these issues. Right, you see, I'm losing my train of thought already. Well, here, let me let me ex- let me let me give my spiel about this, and then we can talk okay. about this. I, I, okay. I'm just going to do my little I'm going to do a two minute rant here and then we can get into this when this album came out two weeks ago I know we're a little late reviewing it but whatever I don't care because it needs to be brought up all I fucking heard was yeah it sucks but you gotta give them that they, they, they tried to experiment they tried to like sound different they tried to do all this shit they, and I, and it, it just it just angers me to no limit with how stupid that entire sentiment sounds. Like, you go on the Metal Sucks review for this, and it's all just, yeah, it sucks, but at least you got to give their creativity. Let me give everyone a heads up here. There is nothing creative about what's going on in this fucking album. Okay? There's no, nothing not, creative. Not I'm going to tell you that right fucking now. There's nothing creative about flipping through the different guitar settings on your little fucking amp program, okay? There's nothing creative about deciding, well, I think I'll scream this part, and then I'll whisper this part, and then I'll, I'll do this in a weird voice, and then I'll do this kind of thing. No. When it all comes down to it, this entire album's in 4-4. Four, four. This entire album uses the same fucking chords for the most part. This entire album uses the same type of guitar playing. The only difference is that the settings are being changed in their fucking DAW. To me, that's not creative. To me, that's just saying, we're out of fucking ideas, and we don't understand how to be musically creative, so we're just going to try to change all the different settings post-recording just to make it sound like we're doing different things and that we're being intelligent with our music. But 
what it all comes off as is just a complete jumbled mess. It comes off as a jumbled mess where you have like you have anywhere from five to to ten tracks, including like the drum tracks, guitar tracks playing. And there's times when like none of it fits with each other at all. Where it just sounds like they're all taken from different songs and just mashed together in this I game. wonder if that was actually a problem. Like they accidentally took different tracks. Well it sounds <laughs> like they did it's it, some of the parts on this album sound like they recorded them and didn't know how to make them sound good. Like that's what it really feels like. It feels like this album So they just recorded a bunch of crap and tried to like crank and sign it. Yeah, that's what it feels like. I mean I mean there's if we're we're talking realistically here some of the guitar work on here is interesting. When the drums match up, so there's, it's, few, yeah, there's, there's, there's some shiny moments like, instrumentally. Yeah. But Eddie Hermabinabla's fucking voice, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. <laughs> and and look, I, I saw him with I saw I've seen him before. I saw him with uh, his old yeah. band, All That Remain. I think also that's all Paris. Right. Also yeah. Paris, that's right. Also yeah. Paris. We saw him. They were fine. Yeah, yeah they, they were good. good. He was. They were good. That was. He was good at what he was doing there. As good as screaming. It's not just the fact that his, his his clean vocals suck. It's not just the fact that his little ideas that he comes up with for the song suck. His he, most of his screaming on the album too. It, it yeah, not fit at all. Like I've heard him sound much better. Than yeah, this. and that's it, what it, leads it. me to believe. Like, was this is is this like the result of a producer who doesn't know how to mix right? Like seriously, I don't, I couldn't find out who produced this, but it sounds like this guy didn't know how to like equalize his voice and fit it in correctly into the song and it's jarring because this Suicide Silence isn't like a bedroom band they're like they 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 headline tours and sell out so what the fuck happened and I mean we let's just get into the whole Eddie thing the biggest problem with the vocals on this album is that you have a guy in heady hermaphrodite or whatever the fuck his name is who thinks he's way more versatile than he actually is. He thinks he can do way more different styles of vocals than he can actually fucking do. And it is it is unbelievably fucking apparent, especially in songs like um uh songs like well Doris first of all, but then you have songs like fucking um what's that song? Uh like Listen or Run where you can tell he's trying his best to just go all over the place with his vocals, and it's just like none of it's working at all, and none of it fits in. Would you agree? Yeah. There's also, uh, you know, it was like, they were trying to do a lot of, like, death tones sort of stuff. Yeah. No, this and sounds like Around the Fur. It sounds like they listened to Around the Fur 500 fucking times and Sorry, it's replicated. I'm trying to look up this producer uh, parent is does Ross Robinson sound correct? Maybe. I thought you were about to say Rick Rubin I was like there's, there's no fucking way Rick Rubin made this fucking album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't uh, fucking I'm know. I'm reading some about Doris Backlash. Hold on. This is great radio I'm listening to you research. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> this it says Ross Robinson producing albums like Slipknot's self-titled and Iowa Discs, Sepultura's Roots, and Korn's debut. So I'm not entirely sure this is the dude who produced the Suicide Silence. Well, you know, it may kind of make sense because this does kind of sound like fucking Korn too, I, yeah. and early Su- uh, like early Slipknot. But what that leads me to believe too, then maybe it, maybe it's not so much it's incompetent producing, it's just they went for something with the producing and just completely missed. They completely missed the mark. I mean, there's there's parts of this album that make me laugh out loud, and there's parts of this album that make me say like like they make me seem scream fuck because of how badly they're done. Like the the chorus part in Run, like we are we were arguing about whether the whether the Teehee part in Doris was worse or the chorus part in Run was wor- worse. And you said that Doris was worse. I still think that the chorus part in Run is worse because to me the the chorus part in Doris 
the Teehee moment, that's just one little thing that he fucked up, and no one, they were all on drugs and didn't bother to fix it. That's the only thing I could think of. But it's just one little part. I could see that part being good if he just does it in an actual voice rather than a Teehee voice like a three-year-old fucking girl. Right. The run part, the chorus part and run, to me, every single fucking thing is wrong with Yeah. Him. From the beat to, the, to the composition to the producing to his vocal performance, everything is wrong with it. And it's just so unsuicide silence. Yeah, so that's the dude who produced it. And look at, you can look at his albums produce itself. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, I think it, like, it just dropped off. They stopped caring like halfway through. What was that one song called? Uh, like Conformity or something? Yeah, the, the like, second like, last six one. minutes of nothing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's get let's talk about that. What what's wrong with tell me Frank, what's wrong with conformity? What's wrong with that? Well song? it starts off extremely slow for like a suicide sound song. And then it gets to the point where there's like a little bit of a ramp up and then it goes straight back into what it was doing for another like minute and a half. And there's another little ramp up and it's straight back into it. And it's just it was not fun. It was boring. Nothing happened. Well, and 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 first, and you'd think that song would maybe it would work if it was like two minutes long. No, this is six fucking minutes, and it's the longest song of the fucking album. Six minutes, six, six minutes of nothing. Six minutes of nothing fucking happening. It's ridiculous. And here, let's talk. Here, let's talk about this. Because you were because you mentioned earlier, you said suicide silence suffers from their own name. What does that yes. mean? What do you mean by that? Meaning when. I want to, uh, like, if I go to a Suicide Silence show, there's a certain, like, atmosphere I expect, which is, like, brutal, in-your-face, just non-stop music, and everybody's going crazy. Now, if you were to put many of the songs from this album into a Suicide Silence show, people would be standing around not knowing what to do. You can't get into it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very awkward sounding. Yes, you just stand there. It's like one of those things. You just you, you just stand there and like look at them, do nothing on the stage for six minutes. Yeah. Well, versus if you look at like you only live once or whatever, and like those songs, everybody's like out of the damn minds, like beat the shit out of each other, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think a good way to put it is that it's one thing to listen to Suicide Silence like, on YouTube or on your, you know, phone or whatever. It's a completely, un- it's a completely it, like, different thing to actually yeah, see them, them live. play it and to be in that atmosphere. And listening to this, I, I feel like I'd be extremely bored at one of their shows, you know? Yeah, it's, for a lot of this. It's, and this isn't, it's not like, the thing is, is that this isn't, like, this, I, this isn't, we're not, we're, it's not like we're bitching about, like, maybe 20% of the album. We're, we're, this is like an album that's at least 50%, the, I'd say even more, probably like 60 to 70% yeah. the slow moving parts. There's like, a lot of slow moving parts. Yeah, there's clean the parts. There's guitars. Some really not, I'm say, there's some cool parts in here. Like, I mean, there's nothing like groundbreaking or anything, but there's some cool parts which could be made into really good songs. But they just stop after a while and get really slow, and it just takes you out of it. Yeah, repeatedly like, throughout the album. You don't do that in one of these shows. Like, if the people are starting to get into it, stuff, everybody's running around. You don't do, like, circle pits and walls of death and things in this kind of song. No. That, that's that's the band. Like, that's... You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, that's I mean... That's you go. I feel like when you want to see Suicide Silence, you expect a certain kind of atmosphere. Well, the thing about Suicide Silence, too, is that if we're being completely honest about fucking Suicide Silence... It's the band like, itself yeah. has never been this like amazing band. No. That's that's but, super different. They're basically a band that took deathcore and just did it perfectly. Like they just do yeah. it perfectly. They know. It, it, I mean, the thing about Suicide Silence is that uh, their ticket to make to listenability. They're, they're, All they had to they're, do was like the same, and they would have been fine. Well, <laughs> I'm saying like their ticket to being a, an enjoyable band on albums like The Cleansing and uh, Wake Up or whatever, with No Time to Bleed and The Black Crown is that each of those fucking songs is just completely over the top. 
and just sounds like they went out there and they said, okay, I'm going to play my guitar as hard as possible, I'm going to smack these drums as loud as possible, and I'm going to scream as loud as I fucking can. And the way that they do it, it just fits perfectly, and you get, you get a sense of, like, what they're going for. You feel right. like, I know exactly what they're going for with this. They're just trying to be as brutal as fucking possible. It's kind of brain dead when you really try to listen to it. Yeah, no, it's nothing, like, over the top. Or, I mean, not... not like, well, uh, I would say it's over the top. That's the indictment I was... Wrong choice, of course. It's nothing, like, groundbreaking. No, though, is it? no, there's nothing, there's nothing ever been groundbreaking. No. about suicide silence. Uh, There's nothing that's ever been super interesting or experimental. They've always just been a band that knew exactly what they wanted to do, and they just hit it perfectly. And that's impressive by itself. It's always been impressive because there's so many bands out there where you can tell you know what they're trying to do, but they just don't do it bands well. Out there, like, like, who want to do the same sort of thing, and they just they don't, just don't they do it as well. off with the same sort of presence. You know? yeah. Like, when you listen to, like, Wake Up, I don't care who the fuck you are, like, by the end of that song, you'll be screaming, wake up, wake up, for that fucking chorus, just because they just hit you so hard with it, and it's so fucking relentless, and they they force you to grab your fucking attention and say, like, listen to this shit, okay, you're listening to Suicide Silence, and you're going to focus on me. And that's one thing I've always been impressed with, like, you know, you look at, like, You Only Live Once and No Pity for a Coward, they always find a, a fun way to, like, get you engaged with the song. And it's almost kind of like pop version of Deathcore at some points, like especially like You Only Live Once, where it's like almost catchy. Like yeah. you, like you remember, everyone remembers a No Pity for a Coward, uh, pull the trigger, bitch. Everyone remembers right. You Only Live Once to so just go fucking nuts. But that's what was so good about it is that it's simple and memorable, and it gets you engaged with the song, and you feel like, yeah, like I understand what's happening here. With this fucking album. That it's just, there's just so much crap going on half the time where it's just like you don't even know what the hell they're trying to do. And it, it really all boils down to the fact that there's times when... Well, there's no times when the voice... I'd say there's about 10% of this album actually sounds like the vocals fit. Realistically. Yeah. Maybe 10%. And I would also say that the guitar work is interesting for maybe 30% of the album, maybe. Well, that's the problem. Like, it, it starts off with some cool stuff, and then they just, like, gave up halfway through yeah. the sound of them. Well, it's, it's just kind of like like the guitar players put in, like, their part. It, it kind of feels like the guitar players put in a full song, they but probably, then they came in yeah, and fucked it all up. They recorded a bunch of crap and then, like, didn't use half of it. Well, they either didn't use half of it, or what they did use, they, they, they fucked it all up. Right. They completely fucked. It sounds like they came back and re-recorded some of these parts and just kept adding yeah. shit on. Because a lot of it, yeah, because there's different sounds in a lot of places, yeah. like you were saying. But I, I, I at the same time, it's like where when going back to my rant I little or had earlier, where I was angrily yelling. You don't don't sit here and tell me like that this that this is anything to this is like eyebrow raising in any way because this is not this isn't anything new this kind of thing's been done before this kind of thing was done before 20 years ago there's very there's 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 small parts in like silence and listen that I actually thought oh that's kind of interesting because they chained up like you want to see suicide silence be experimental on how they play deathcore like they want you want to see them change up the deathcore formula not by yeah. introducing new no, musical elements entirely like, yeah like you don't that's you don't not, you don't make deathcore interesting by just shoehorning they new metal into it. Shitty bands and clean vocals. Yeah. You know? it, it just feels like they take they take this genre and then they just try to smash as many other kinds of genres in there and they say, oh, it's experimental. There you go. Like, don't change it that way. Change it how... Change how you fucking play deathcore. Change how you play your music. Like, change up a fucking time signature for God's sakes every once in a while. You know? Or... or like, like, change up the way you play your genre of music, or just fucking play it like you were before, like you know you already had to do. I mean, it might be the same fucking album, and but at honestly, least people will fucking want to hear just, that. Like, made more of the same, it would have been fine. Yeah. If people would have been like, oh, it was great. I mean, you know? if, if they had just came out with another album that was the, just the same as, as the fucking Black Crown, I'm, like, sure people would have been bitching about how, like, oh, this is, a, this is just the yeah, same thing. But at least they're not, it, it would, like, pissing so, people off. Yeah, exactly. It would have been 
at least it doesn't come yeah, off yeah, as like pretentious. Is that you would be okay listening to a show. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly too. I mean, the, the whole point is, I mean, if you want to talk about, I don't know how they're gonna like melt mesh any of this stuff into like the rest of the show. No. Awesome. Like start off with one of these songs and then just like go. Ah, see, I don't. I don't know. It doesn't. It, it doesn't it, it's not like it doesn't work for them. No. Like I think another band probably could have done something like this if they not suicide. Side. No. Well, I mean, the thing is, is when you play when you have when you have four fucking albums in a row that sound like the same kind of thing, basically it's really hard to do something that's completely different and actually sound like you're good at it. I mean, th- like, you see this with a lot of bands where they'll try to experiment and then it just completely backfires. Because the fact right. of the fucking matter is that those musicians are good at playing their style of music, but they're not good at playing that other style of music. There's, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it, there's something wrong with it when you have a band that clearly doesn't really know what makes a certain genre of music tick and then tries to reproduce that fucking genre of music. Like, there's there's craft going on in White Pony by Deftones. There's, there's, specific, there's specific ideas that are coming into fruition from them. But it sounds like Suicide Silence took away from it, well, you got to have, like, a clean vocal part, and then you got to have, like, a clean guitar part, and then you got to have a part where he's whispering. Like, that's what they took away with it, without understanding why those parts are in the song. They just kind of threw it in there, because they thought, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's where I'm at. I don't have a whole lot else to say. It was it just didn't work. Well, what what do you think? Would would you rate this album? Do you think? What do you think? Like nine out of ten? Yeah. Nine and a half oh. out of ten? Close. close. Eleven out of ten? Like a three or a two out of ten? Really? That bad? <laughs> <laughs> well. I don't know. Like, I probably would rate it worse, but like I said, I think they suffer big time from the fact that it's not their style of music. And that's why I, I, I what, you can go in expecting one thing and then you get mediocre as shit and another thing that doesn't really work. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't uh, know. I would probably give this album uh... I don't even know. I feel like you disliked it more than I did, so I don't well, know. <laughs> it's just frustrating because cause I know this whole... I, like, I've seen what's going going on with... like I see how they're trashing their fans. They've been pretentious about this album. They've been acting like this you is see, like, I, I, an I, album. I, I, I don't know. Well, and I just see this fan movie. reaction where it's like this apologetic reaction to it where it's like, oh, well, it's bad, but... You know, at least they're trying to be different, and that's no, that's the no, thing that pisses me off. You see, that's not what it is. Like, no, they're not. If you're gonna be different, I can understand why you would try to want to do that, but it doesn't work for you. Well, you yeah, know, and they're like, going bad like, completely the wrong way. You're, you're going into like a genre that you shouldn't be going. No, you should be going something else. You're venturing into shit that you cannot pull off, yeah. and it is very fucking clear. Right. Um, but for me. I would give this like a D, not like a full fledged fucking F, because yeah. because I could see like there's there's flashes of 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 actual like interesting parts like there's like silence is, isn't that bad I a song. There's, um, there's there's some there's parts little of, flashes of cool. Stuff. Yeah, and the guitar. Uh, I think well, you also have to think whether or not it's the fact that the rest of it was so bad that you think these parts are great because. I don't know. Looking at it, kind of taking a step no, back. No, nothing. I, out of the order, I, I don't else. think so. I think I think there were some legitimately like, mostly with like the guitars. Mostly, there's not yeah. the the drums are forgettable. The, the bass are forgettable. I mean, like for guitars for the most part are forgettable, but like there's some it's cool parts. Take a step back, and it's like nothing crazy. Yeah, and I think honestly. That if they replace the singer with someone who could actually be versatile, like like a versatile singer, well, uh, like if you want an example of versatile, if singer, you want like, to go in that direction, well, I'm saying if you want an example of a singer that could pull this off, is is the guy from Darren Gray. I don't know his exact name, but I don't know if you know the band, the Japanese band Darren Gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. singer who can venture into clean singing, screaming, right. 
death growls, all these different sorts of vocals, and pull them all off and make them sound cohesive and impressive. If he was, if he was, if he was doing this album, slice he could have pulled this off. Yeah, or slice the cake. That's another great example. Okay. That guy can yeah. can do a wide range of vocal styles and sound well. If you think about it, like that slice the cake album, I think was probably in the same sort of vein as what they were trying to do, with a little more yeah. tone sort of stuff. Well, it's 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 more like it, it where it like changes up pace, it changes up tone, right? Very but wide. They pulled it off pretty well. Yeah, and the other thing about like that album, album is that even though they're going for different styles of music, it all sounds very focused in that it fits along with each other. Right. As opposed to this album, it, that sounds yeah, like a mess. You definitely get it. It's like a path. Like you, you're you, you're not like jarred or bored out of your damn mind. Yeah. With this, it's just. I mean, you hear a part that just sounds so... Yeah, structurally, there were some weird choices in some of these songs. Yeah. Other songs. Songs. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's all I got to say. So. Yeah, I don't ever want to listen to this again. I don't... Oh, never I don't ever want to go to another Suicide Silence show again unless they're, they have completely abandoned this album, which I'm sure will happen in the next album cycle. You can imagine them being on, like, Summer Slaughter... And then pulling out of conformity? <laughs> no, I can't. If that happened, like we were talking earlier, we were like, that's the part where you go get a beer, is during yep. conformity, because it's six minutes of nothing happening. So, exactly. whatever. Whatever. Well, I think that's it for us. You got anything else to say to the three people who are go. listening to this? The zero people. The two, three people, two of which are us. <laughs> That there is somebody you trap. Someone who's very <laughs> bored. Someone who is very bored and has nothing to do with their lives <laughs> to go this yeah. deep into YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it's a D album. Mass and is a B album. Um, I say a high B. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I mean, fuck it. Fuck everything. <laughs> Just fuck metal. Metal sucks. This is this is what we got. This is what twenty seventeen has to offer. Yeah. It's fucking Duh. suicide silence. Mitch Looker is doing fucking cartwheels in his fucking grave when he hears Doris. <laughs> Crashing his motorcycle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and with that, I think we're out. <laughs> well well. You do the outro since I did the intro. All right, we're done. Uh, thanks for listening to this garbage. Uh, <laughs> check out Mastodon. I would recommend not checking out Suicide Silence unless you really want to see. I would recommend Oxycodone as opposed yeah, to Suicide Silence. That, that might be help. Yep. Or like listen to Suicide Silence while you're like doing something where you're not actually paying attention. If you're if you're on the edge of suicide and you're just looking for something to push you over that edge, I would recommend <laughs> suicide <laughs> silence. <laughs> I can't recommend no, no, Yes no. I would. You need something better. <laughs> I would rec I would well I would just recommend you you start playing this and as soon as the T he part happens in Doris, you turn it off and just shoot yourself so that's the last thing you ever hear in this life. Because that perfectly sums up our existence as metalheads the point where we're come this is what we're provided as music. But continue your outro. Yeah, <laughs> 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 okay, just